good um, afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm sorry that I had to start the year so late with uh, my analysis. It's just unforeseen circumstances happened throughout the time. And that's the reason why I saw my apologies for that. I also just want to check with you guys if you do hear me clearly. I just bought a new device for volume and I'm not sure if I'm, you hear me clearly or so if you can just give me a thumbs up. Um, okay, let's see, let's see. Uh, da -da. Uh. 100%. Okay, great. Very clear. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, so from the beginning of the year, it's always kind of, it's not always, it is prudent for us to have a general outlook on how the all share index and its sectors are going to perform every beginning of the year um, so that you you have a an idea of what shares to be in, um, what shares that you should not be investing in, and if you're looking for very bullish shares or ones that have turned bullish, what what is from sector, uh, in other words, indices, and from the indices, I then cherry pick which shares one should then um, be in. But you will see as I go through the presentation, there are some shares that I've highlighted, and I've used a robot system. In other words, the uh, red yellow and green system so obviously the green ones would mean shares that are or indices that are bullish and the yellow would be ones that are turning bullish and the red would be ones that i would consider you should not invest in so in this particular uh let's just see i think i see a question mark i'm not too sure if it has to do oh um is, am i clear with everyone because uh miss carter mrs carter if it's the sound is poor on your side. It might, if it's poor, it might be poor on your side. I just, is everyone hearing me clearly, or is this, is everyone experiencing poor sound? <clears throat> if, um, you could just let me know, because I would hate to continue, you guys, loud and clear. Okay, so, um, Mrs. Carter, can you please check on your side? Maybe it could be the reception, uh, reception on your side please, I can. Um, otherwise, this is a recorded presentation, so you'll be able to listen to the recording. All right. Okay, so I've started off with the yellow zone. I call it the yellow zone. Um, thank you for that. Um, I call it the yellow zone. I have started off with the yellow and not necessarily the green or the red yet, because these are shares that are starting to turn bullish. Um, as you can see. So this is sector analysis for 2021 because we're trying to just get what sectors to be invested in for the year that will give us profitable, a good profitable return. So when I talk about the yellow zone, it's, this, it's indices that are turning bullish with upside potential. So a lot of them have either been bearish for years and they're looking like they are the regaining upside momentum in their bull trend, in their bear trends rather, or some are testing um, the key resistance trend lines. And once that uh, trend line is breached, then they start a new bullish journey. Okay, so the yellow zone shares are ones that are potentially possibly still in their bear trends, but are regaining upside momentum. And once they break out of their bear trends, there's, you know, there's a lot of upside potential, potentially, <clears throat> excuse me, trading up to all time highs, uh, you know, the previous all time highs. Okay, so it's indices, just to repeat, it's indices, the yellow zone would be indices that are turning bullish with upside potential. So they, they, still bearish, but uh, looking, it looks like there's buying momentum coming through. And those are the type of shares that we really want to <clears throat> keep in mind or keep in our watch list because once that bear trend ends, then it starts a whole new um, bull phase that could be really profitable throughout the year. Okay. Now the indices I am looking at are construction. And in, so the ones that are in the yellow zone, Bear in mind, it's the ones that are starting to regain upside momentum that are bearish but are regaining upside momentum is construction and engineering index. It is the general finance index, banks, mobile telecoms index, and lastly, the property index. So these are one, two, three, four, five. Four. These are the five index that are in the yellow zone. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me start off with the construction and it's actually construction and uh, engineering um, index. I don't want you to worry about the levels so far, but it's more the picture outline. Um, what this, I'm using the monthly chart because remember with the monthly chart, we're trying to get a broader perspective. Um, 
it's kind of like our map in order to know where where the what the direction will be um, in a few months time or for the year so if you look at this um, chart I'm looking at the monthly chart here as I said it's the construction and engineering index please ignore this material it's the same but um, it's actually known as a construction and engineering index <clears throat> excuse me so uh, the index is still trading within its bear trend and it's been bearish since 2010 so it's been bearish for 10 years um, and usually, you know, index has been bearish for so long. Once it starts picking up momentum, that's a good time to get in. Now, in this case scenario, it's teetering on the resistance trend line of its bear trend. And as you can see, it has failed a few times to breach it, but this time it's kind of perked up, but it's still kind of, it's teetering on it. Now, <clears throat> in order for it to then turn bullish, it would have to trade through this resistance trend line and like i said don't worry about levels but a positive breakout would be confirmed at this point it would be at 14 or say 15 um you know whatever the the barometer is there but don't worry about numbers um because the most important thing is the shares but i'm just giving you an outline of how the indices are looking so positive breakout will be confirmed around there and that would end a 10-year bear trend. And from there on, as we could see, it test its next resistance levels. As you can see, that's key resistance there, which would give a nice 78% gain already. And if it does breach that, we can have an additional 43%. And from there onwards, we could have an additional 109%. So this is a 10-year bear trend that could potentially end once this level is breached. And we could slowly embark on that bullish journey towards prior resistance levels we have seen such movement happen this is what is sometimes characteristics of a bear trend that once it ends and the bullish momentum starts coming through then we could um profit quite largely from the recovery or where it starts to regain upside momentum a lot of the asset managers are looking for shares like this that have plummeted quite a lot and are starting to look like they turning because of course you obviously get them at a really reasonable price <clears throat> so this is definitely this construction and engineering index is definitely in our yellow zone for the mere fact that it's now teetering on the resistance trend line of its long term rather 10 year bear trend and once that has ended and um, we could then see it recover its losses i will show you what shares are in the index in a few minutes so it's also important that when this index breaks out of its bear trend that its rsi follows suit and if its rsi breaks out of its own bear trend before time that is a good sign that buying momentum is coming through and that's what would then change the yellow zone into a green zone okay right now it's yellow because it's, it's teetering on the resistance trend line and hasn't confirmed a positive breakout yet but we're keeping it on the watch list now it's it's 33% away from its breakout level. That's all you should need to know. And, and as time, I will keep this on a spreadsheet. So as it trades and this percentage gets less and less, it means it would then be approaching its breakout level. And that's when um, we could see a lot of the shares. So what the index is, is an, um, an indication of sentiment of all the shares within this index, all the construction and engineering shares. So it gives you an uh, overall overview of how the shares are looking okay um now the alternative scenario of course is that because it has failed a few times to breach this trend line it may fail again in which case um it may fail again and if it's rsi remains bearish it means it's the, not enough buyers to push the index out um the bear trend would persist it could even test its all-time low or continue trading sideways all right so that's why it's in the yellow zone it hasn't broken out of its bear trend yet, but we need to keep an eye on it because once it does, then there is a lot of, firstly, it's very cheap. You'll get the share prices at really, really cheap prices. And there is a lot of upside potential throughout the year. If you, <clears throat> excuse me, my, my throat has just been giving me a lot of problems. If, um, if you want to have an idea of how it could potentially work it's similar to what the platinum shares did when they broke out of the bear trend or when they started recovering within the bear trend they completed not even just the platinum pardon me the gold shares that broke out and they started you know surging quite quite significantly i'm not saying that this would surge quite significantly when it breaks out but it it has potential to complete that 100 percent retracement okay so 
Um, I'm going to be looking at the shares, not the shares, just um, the shares that are in the index. So we're not going to be going through technical analysis of individual shares, but I have categorized them as well in robot format. So there would be the green, which means go long, and it's those shares that are bullish and have breached their buying levels. Then the yellow ones are ones that we have to keep on the amber. It's the ones that we have to keep on our watch list because the shares are approaching buying levels. So you don't buy shares that are approaching buying levels, but you do put them on the watch list. Um, and when they breach the buying levels, they go to green. Okay, and then obviously red would mean the shares are bearish or they overextended, meaning they run up too, too much and are potentially going to start correcting. And these are the shares that investors should not buy at all. All right. So this is the construction and engineering index. These are the shares that are in that index. I've put them in color format so you can understand. In this case, Marianne Roberts, Affirmatch, PPC have actually breached their bound levels. Um, Robin Wilson, Bailey Holmes is on red, meaning if you do have that share in your portfolio, I think you should probably um, cash out and keep your capital so you can get into any of the other construction shares. And obviously, Rubex Group, is it means it's still approaching its buying level. Okay, I hope this is helpful, um, just so that you keep in mind. We will be looking at the individual shares when I'm done with the whole um, sector analysis. Okay. Next would be the general finance index, and we'll see what shares are in there. Um, I'm using the monthly chart again just to give me a, a broader perspective of what is happening in the share or the lifetime, as you could see, set it back to 2011. And if you look here, it has been trading a bear trend since 2006, so it's been bearish for for four years. Um, what it has done, though, it's formed rising bottoms. Rising bottoms are always an indication that buyers are coming in gradually. Um, so that is a good, that's a bullish sign. It hasn't necessarily broken out of its bear trend, but because of these rising bottoms, it's telling us that we need to prepare for a potential breakout. What is giving us high hopes, at, or giving me high hopes at this point, is that its RSI is broken out of its own um, bear trend, which commenced around the around the end of um, yeah, around uh, 20, 2016 as well, right? So that's broken out, which means we should watch out for potential breakout. Now, it needs to at least trade up to this trend line and breach it. Once it does, um, it will then end the bear trend. A positive breakout would be confirmed, and that would end a four-year bear trend. From the onwards, we could see it go up to its next resistance level, which is a 23% appreciation. And once it breaches that, it could go up another 16% or and another 23%. Um, as it uh, you know, breaches other resistance levels. Okay, so it's on the yellow zone because it's regaining upside momentum within its bear trend. Um, as I pointed out, that it's it's a very significant move that its monthly RSI has actually broken out of its bear trend. That is an indication that we should anticipate some upside and a potential breakout of this general finance index. It's currently 13% away to its breakout, uh, breakout level, which is which is not not as much as you know the construction, but it's it's headed there. So we should start preparing um, for it potentially breaking out. Okay. The alternative scenario is that if it doesn't break out and possibly find some resistance, the bear trend will persist and it could fall down to that low, which is a 30% drop. So you obviously <clears throat> in the yellow zone, you're not going long of any share, but you're keeping an eye on the shares. All right. Um, so yeah, this is it. If it does do the opposite, which means drop by 30%, you wouldn't be in the in the index or in any of the particular shares if that's the case. Okay. Um, it will retain its bear trend, and yeah, then we would then put it in the red zone. Okay, it's in the yellow zone because it's regaining upside momentum. Now, just to point out again, green, go long, um, amber, watch list, and bearish. Red means bearish or overextended. Now, general finance index, these are the shares that are in the general finance index. And you can then see that there are a few that are <clears throat> actually green, which means they've breached their buying levels, which would be Ramgro, Coronation, PSG Group, um, HC, Hoxton Consolidated Investment, uh, Zeta Investments and Long for Life. So these have breached their buying levels, but you can see they also the other ones um, that are 
hit it approaching buying levels. Of course, TCP is in red because it's overextended. So um, I'll have to, you know, we need to watch out. If it does breach key support, then it means it's starting to correct. Uh, Quilter and JSC, they, <clears throat> they're not shares that I would consider at this point because uh, Quilter is bearish, but T, uh, TCP has run up so hard and it's tested its all time high. So I just need to monitor if it's going to continue with the upside momentum or it's going to start correcting. And um, JSC is basically bearish still. It hasn't really pushed up like all the other shares. Okay. Next would be um, the banks index, which is vastly different from, as you can see, the, those the, in the general finance, it's more the insurance stocks, life insurance stocks, and so on, um, <clears throat> and asset management. But banking stocks are just the banking stocks, as you would know. So with this, they broke out of the bull train in February 2020, and that, that pulled back quite significantly. This could also be news related because it was um, the time of the pandemic. Uh, but it's also forming rising bottoms. And as I had mentioned, rising bottoms means there's buying momentum coming through. I'm using the weekly chart here because there's some distortion in the chart on the weekly, on the monthly chart. So um, don't mind that, but just keep this momentum into, into consideration, as in watch out for this momentum. RSI is bullish, which is a good sign. It means that the you know buyers are coming in in numbers, as you can see with the rising bottoms. Uh, it did correct currently, so if it holds at support there or holds at support at six uh, six thousand one hundred and thirty, and then or else if it retains its bull trend on the price chart, then we could see it rise up even further, or, or you know with the share price. We could see the share price regain upside, and that upside to the next resistance level is a 19% gain. And then if it continues through that key level, as you could see, it was key support, which could, be, could become resistance. But if it does breach that, it'll be an additional 26% gain, which is roughly 35%. That's not too bad. That upside momentum, and we'd have to then see what happens when it tests this key trend line. If it does breach the trend line, it could go up an additional 13% to um, to another resistance level. All right, so this would give you a nice roughly just below 50% gain. Okay, alternative scenario is that if it breaks out of its bull trend, in other words, starts trading below 6,130, um, it could fall back down to its support, which is a 31% loss. All right, in which case we wouldn't be I mean, we'd have to, it would already hit stop loss levels so that we don't have to experience that 31% drop. Okay. So, same applies go long, watch list, bearish overextended, and these are the shares. Um, first rand is in the yellow, so it's approaching its buying level. Standard Bank, Absa, and NetBank seem to have breached their buying levels. Capitec is red because it it's it's reversing above its all-time high, and when and that means it's overextended. Uh, it needs to breach its all-time high in order to turn green again. But if it fails to do that, it means uh, you know sellers could catch wind of that and they could pull the share price down. All right? It's not necessarily bearish. It just means it's overextended. It's bullish, but it's too late to get in right now. The only time you could get in is once it breaches its all-time high, because then it would start a whole new bull phase. Right, so yeah, keep this in mind. Next would be mobile telecoms index. It's in the yellow zone. Um, so the index has been bearish since 2015. It's maintained this uptrend, and I've gone back to the monthly chart. So this is basically how it looks from 1970 to now. This is basically how it looks. So <clears throat> the important thing at this point is there are two, these two trend lines. It's the dotted one as well as the resistance trend line of its bear trend. Once these two trend lines are breached, that could trigger or prompt a lot of upside momentum, and we could really see it recover its losses towards its all-time high. These are the type of shares I like. The, all the ones I'm talking, the type of indices I like, currently breaking out and have a lot of upside momentum. Those are the ones you're getting them at a really reasonable price, and you're just increasing your positions every time that they continue trading upwards. Now, in this case, it could be stuck between these two trend lines, but it's important that it breaches the dotted trend line, which is dated back to 1970. 
was tested again in 2018 and again in 2019 and it actually broke out in 2020 which is obviously the corona time but it's regaining that upside momentum but we just need to make sure it's not a bear you know what they call a flag so that's why it's important that it trades through this dotted trend line um with its rsi looking bullish this means if you could see there that at least um, gives us hope that this it will breach that trend line and start embarking on its bullish journey. And if it does, that could be to the next resistance level would be 30% gain, and there will be an additional 38% gain and an additional 60% gain. So there's a lot of upside momentum with this. So that's about 120 something, 130%, 38 million, um, or 28 to to its all-time high. You know, so these are uh, this is what I really consider hot donuts um, in the in the stock market. So the alternative scenario is that if it fails to breach this trend line, which will now become a critical trend line for us to know whether we should pump in more money in mobile telecoms or we should just keep things neutral. If it does fail to breach this trend line, then unfortunately this would be known as a a rising wedge, which is a bearish continuation pattern. And if it breaches that, the lower slope of the wedge, it could fall back down to its support, which is a 40% um, drop, okay? This trend line proves to be quite important, so we need to keep a close eye on it. Again, go long at green, watch listed at amber, and bearish or overextended if it's red. Now, these are the the shares in the mobile telecom index, Vodacom, MTN, Blue, and Telecom. As you can see, Vodacom and MTN are on amber, which means they are approaching. They, they've they been bullish, but they're now approaching very key. So, I mean, I'm going to go through the shares with you, but with Vodacom and MTN, what we have seen over the past last year was that they started to regain upside within the bear trends. Now they're actually testing the resistance trend line and once they do break and breach a buying level that then gives a long-term buy signal so they are bullish but it's now they need to breach that trend line because if it doesn't breach the trend line then we'd have to close the positions but ones that are doing particularly well are um blue and telcom because they've broken out of their bear trends and are now starting to regain uh, upside momentum or recover previous losses okay these ones are on our watch list these get giving us a green signal so yeah um, if you are in Vodacom and MTN, I suggest you stay in. Um, if you're considering getting in, we, I will be talking about buying levels and that you should get in. If you're in, those buying levels would be a level that you want to increase your position, buy more of the share, in other words. Okay. So there's no red in any of these uh, shares at the moment. Okay. Then lastly would be the property index. As we know, property index has really plummeted, you know, to all time lows, formed all time lows. So getting it at current prices once the buying level is breached would be a good, good long term investment. So it broke out of its bull trend in February 2018 and then just pulled back and pulled back quite significantly around 2020. Um, so it's been in this bear trend ever since. Now it's trading sideways, and when it does trade sideways, it is kind of frustrating because there is no, it could continue with that sideways momentum for some time. But if this trend line is breached, which is the resistance trend line of the bear trend, and a positive breakout is confirmed above this this level, which is at this point would be 330, say 335, then we could see upside to its next resistance level, which is a 28% gain. And if that level is breached, it could go up an additional 24%. And, you know, if it, that resistance level is breached, it could go up an additional 31%. So we could see it gradually recover its losses to its all-time high. Okay. But it's still in the yellow zone, meaning you, these don't, it's on, we, it's on amber, which means we just need to watch the movement before we, we get in. It's also quite significant that its RSI is broken out of its bear trend, which means buyers are now coming in, are flocking in. But I would suggest with the index um, is waiting for it to break out of its bear trend. 
Okay, the alternative, it's, it's now 24% away to its breakout level. Um, so we'll watch it. And as this percentage reduces until it's zero, it would mean it's now breaking out of its, um, breaking out of its bear trend and starting a new bull trend. Okay, the alternative scenario is that it could continue trading sideways, um, in which case don't be buying any shares, although there are a few shares. Remember, this is the index, but there are a few shares in the index that one can buy, but because it's in the yellow zone, a lot of the shares will probably be in amber, which means they are approaching the buying levels. They haven't breached the buying levels yet. Okay, and if it does continue trading sideways, it could fall to its lowest slope, um, which is 30% drop, but just generally trading between these two trend, these two levels, which can be slightly frustrating, okay, meaning there won't be much returns made if it continues to any sideways. Okay, again, um, red, green, go long, yellow, watch list, and then red would be bearish or overextended. Now, these are the ones that are in the property index. As you can see, most of them are in amber. They haven't breached their buying levels yet. Although Fortress, FFB, and FFA have breached their buying levels, and so has SAC. Next would be SSS storage and Arrowhead properties, but the rest, these two are bearish or overextended, um, so don't consider them. But um, Amara and Accelerate Property Fund are amber, which means they're gaining bullish momentum but have not breached buying levels. Okay. Right, this is it for today. I, I really hope this was helpful. These are shares in the yellow zone. And I will just repeat the yellow zone are ones that are turning bullish in the bear trends, but have not broken out of the bear trends. And um, the next thing I'll be doing is cherry picking the shares. I'll be looking in the Excel spreadsheet, there will be buying levels of the shares that are yellow. And um, what I will be talking about in the shares are the ones that are green. Okay, I can't talk about all the shares, but there will be a spreadsheet just um, uh, on the website that will, you know, have the buying levels for the ones that are in amber. And once those buying levels are breached, they will turn green. Okay, so that it, it, it guides you at least. Right, so what am I going to be looking at um, on Tuesday? I will be looking at the green zone. Green zone are shares that are generally bullish that if you're looking to go long, it is the time to go long, um, and they still have some upside potential. Okay. Right, so um, I haven't done this in a while, so sorry if there was a lot of uh, pauses or didn't or anything like that, but I'll get into it again as we continue. I see there's a question. Oh, let me see, let's see what it says. Thanks, very informative, look up. Oh, thank you, Philip, thank you very much. Um, so, like I say, at this point for the remainder of the year, I'll be keeping these shares in the the three colors. So, you know, for instance, if someone tells you it's time to go long of this share or you should ne need to get in, if you go onto our website and it's in the red zone, you can then safely say, no, I won't get into it. But if it's in the yellow zone, you should probably consider it. And if the shares in the green zone, it would mean you should you should get in. All right. Um, so please join our Telegram, Heine does a, Hendrik does a very um, awesome job there, and I also put in my two cents worth at times. Um, please email your cell phone number to mediasharetracking.com or install the app and look for and uh, join the share tracking media or look for that share tracking media icon. Uh, to know what I'm going to be talking about or any information, please join us on social media information particularly on what we're going to be talking or I'm going to be talking about the next time. Please join us on or follow us on Instagram. Sorry, not Instagram. Uh, Twitter and Facebook with the handle being at ShareTrackingM. And you can email any questions to me at guru sharetracking.com. Now, for those who didn't really get or the lines were bad and they didn't, the sound was a bit wonky. If you want the recording, this is how you could get to the recording. When you get to your encompass um, uh, platform, please, once you've logged in, 
click on education, there'd be that drop down. In the drop down, you'll see webinars. Click on webinars, this page will come up. And then there will be live webinars archive. Click on that. And once you click on that, there'll be a drop down with all the most recent recordings. The re most recent one will be on top with all the recordings. And you can then um, listen to it at your own time, stop, rewind, fast forward, whatever you want to do. All right. Thank you everyone for tuning in um, and th thank you for the report saying it's useful. I appreciate that. Um, as I said, the next one we are going to be looking at are uh, sectors in the green zone. All right. Um, just bear with me as in terms of how I'm doing this. Uh, you will see the point of this as we start investing in shares and the exciting things I've come up with, with that will really assist you. Um, this is the year. You know, we don't know if 2021 will turn out as 2020, but one thing we can really control is our finances and which shares we invest in. And we are definitely there for you. Okay. Have an awesome weekend and Thursday until Tuesday. Goodbye. Toodles.